e fades. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Keith Paints. Today, I'm painting Biero Nailo. He is an elf wizard, and I'm using this elf mage model from Titan Forge's Titans of Adventure Series 1. Check out their Patreon for more info. This video is also part of my Goobertown Roulette Season 2 entry. Check the links in the description for other videos. On to Biero. His name was randomized from the player's handbook as were two Magic the Gathering colors to serve as inspiration for his character, part of the Goobertown Roulette thing. He ended up being a black-white combination. In Magic the Gathering, black and white are opposite on their color wheel. White is represented by order and justice, and black is represented by death and self-interest. I wasn't sure how to make this character at first, but his race and class provided a couple options. First of all, the obvious choice might be to make him a drow. Naturally evil, but if being played by a person, then probably breaking that mold. That's a pretty specific figure though, and I thought I would get more mileage out of this model if I was able to represent any elf with it, not just a drow. So I ruled out the drow. The other types of elves are many and a little confusing, so that didn't help. Their typical alignment did provide a bit of a hook though. They tend towards a chaotic good alignment, which sounds awfully black-white, but the real ideas came with the class. Reading about wizards, the most obvious choice for magic user, I found that their backstories tend to be dominated by one extraordinary event, culminating in them discovering their innate magical abilities or their interest in magic. That was it. He is a wood elf of some sort. While very young, he began having terrible nightmares. It was only too late that he discovered they were prophetic. He dreamed of his village burning, attacked by a band of orcs. He only escaped himself by following his prophetic dreams to safety. He eventually found others, and migrated to a new settlement, but still plagued by visions. He left at a young age. Which leads me to his background. Biero Nailo is an outlander. As an outlander, his origin is as an exile or outcast, plagued by unidentifiable visions of death. He left the company of others, fearing it was their deaths and he was the cause. Living in the wild, however, hunting to live, can bring you to grips with death though, and it wasn't long before he returned to civilization with new goals. For personality traits, running 25 miles to warn of an orc invasion is something he definitely wishes he could have done, and a couple of others here would have sufficed, but in the end I sort of modified the first one. He was driven by a wanderlust, rooted in his visions, which led him away from home. Now, he stopped running, and will face the future with conviction. Of the chaotic and good ideals, happiness doesn't really seem his cup of tea. Life being in constant change, and having to change with it, however, I think does align with his life goals. His bond is obvious, he clearly suffers awful visions of disasters. Upon returning to civilization, he finds the village he had left long since destroyed, just like in the visions he was running from. Which leads nicely into his flaw. He realizes he can't save the weak. There are too many of them. He can punish those who prey on them, however, and his life goal becomes clear. He must become more powerful so he can destroy the perpetrators of violence in his visions. He feels, through might, he can impose an order that will protect the weak, even if many must die to get there. He's a little conflicted. His adventuring partner is Nemea, a tiefling warlock who befriended him upon his return to civilization. And though I painted Biero first, it was Nemea's story that I figured out first, and part of figuring out Biero was finding a partner I thought would complement Nemea. On to painting. I primed him with Chaos Black Spray, then went over his robes with Abaddon Black. My plan is to cross-hatch his robes, starting with darker colors in the recesses, and building up to brighter colors at the tops of the folds. I started with Nagaroth Knight, a nice dark purple, drawing rows of lines down each recess, then I came back and did them all again in the opposite direction. Next, I did the same thing with Xerius Purple, but avoiding the deepest parts of the recesses and covering the peaks. And finally, I repeated the process with Gene Stealer Purple, focusing just on the peaks this time. 
I am really satisfied with how his robes turned out. I forgot about his sleeves and collar, so I did those quickly with the same colors. Though, hatching was kind of hard in the tight space, so I didn't really do any. I painted his skin before metal, because I thought it would be hard to do without hitting parts that I wanted metal colored. Specifically, his right cheek is pretty close to his shoulder pad. I used the same 5 stop ramp that I have been practicing with for flesh. Bugman's Glow, Bugman's mixed with Cadian Flesh Tone, Pure Cadian, Cadian mixed with Kislev Flesh, and then pure Kislev Flesh, thinned with Lamian Medium. I don't think I did a terribly good job on his skin, but it's not so bad that I want to do it again. Tiny spaces are hard to get gradients on. His eyes are white scar with Abaddon black pupils. All that armor on him isn't actually armor. Wizards don't wear armor. What I decided it was is just fancy cloth embroidered with gold and silver thread and built up to look like armor. It offers no actual protection unless he casts mage armor on himself. I made the mistake of base coating all the metals with lead belcher though. I should have left it black and hatched over with metallics to achieve a better effect. Instead, I started with lead belcher and gave it a wash with nuln oil. While that dried, I used rhinox hide to paint his pouches and belt as well as the cover of his book, and dryad bark for his staff. Then I used retributor armor on all the trim and filigree of his pretend armor. I tried painting the teardrops and ball on his staff in purple. I think the ball on the staff looks alright, but I think I maybe should have gone with red for the teardrops. The purple doesn't stand out enough. I used the same Nagaroth Knight, Xerius, and Gene Stealer purples I used for his clothes, with a little white scar mixed in at the end. The teardrops are really small though. Now I get back to the pretend armor, cross hatching it with Iron Breaker and then Runefang Steel. If you look at his hips you can kind of see some of the lines, but I'd like to try it again sometime over black. I used the same colors to layer and highlight the metal bits on his staff in a more conventional method. To highlight leather, I used Rhinox Hide mixed with Bugman's Glow. I paint the pages of his book with Rackarth Flesh. I highlighted his black hair with Mechanicus Standard Grey and Dawnstone in just a couple of spots and then used Lead Belcher to get his forehead ornamentation that I missed. He's pretty much done now. What you can see of his base, I painted with Mechanicus Standard Grey, stippled on a bit of Dawnstone, and washed with Agrax Earthshade. I decided to give him writing in his book. The right page is supposed to be the gesture he makes while casting the spell. I really need to work on my tiny writing, this is pretty bad. I also tried to put some sort of eldritch symbol on the front of the book in warpstone glow, but that didn't really work very well either. You can hardly see it, so I just left it and edge highlighted the tiles of the base with Celestia Grey and called it a day. This is Biero Nailo, Biero Nightbreeze in common. I really like how his robes turned out. Of all the cloth I hatched in this series, I feel like this first one went the best, and the rest kinda got worse as they went. I tried something different in each of them though, and I think the cross hatching in the next project I do will be much better. So what do you think of Biero Nailo, the elf wizard? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.